Hi guys, so it's been around two months since I bought my digital like SL camera. So I thought I should do a follow-up video just to let you guys know, do I like this camera? Is it, do I regret buying it? Do I love it? And whether or not you may want to get this camera if you've not already bought this camera. I know some of you that watch this channel have already been out and bought yourself a like SL. And some of you have told me you really enjoy it. So that was great to hear. Hello, Matt here from MrLuck.com. Uh, somewhere different today. I'm out in Tenerife. Getting out of the UK to do some model shoots was a great opportunity for me to test this camera fully and to really put the camera through its paces. But before we get to that, let's just step back a little. For those of you that have not seen this channel before, I own a Leica CL, a Leica M240, and now the Leica SL. I will do full reviews SL versus CL, SL versus M240, and also the SL versus the Limix S5, which is what I'm recording on at the moment. So this video is less of a comparison and more of a feedback video with example photos because I shot this camera constantly during I think 10 model shoots out here in Tenerife. Um, in terms of lenses I'm using on the Leica SL, if you don't know this is a L mount camera and personally I enjoy using Leica M mount lenses. They can be made by Voigtlander, Leica, Zeiss, whoever. I use Leica thread mount lenses. As you can see here I've got the Elmar 90mm. I'll come on to that in a second. And I use like R lenses. Um, I'm recording this video with a like R lens at the moment. I know some of you have written to me asking, should I buy this camera? Do you like this camera? So that's more what we're going to talk about today. After buying the like a SL, do I still use the like a CL? The answer is perhaps twofold. Answer one: No, I've not picked up the like a CL after buying the like a SL. For those of you who don't know, the like a CL is a crop sensor camera. This is full frame, both mirrorless cameras. Answer number two, that's partly for the fact that it's had to go back to Germany because an SD card got stuck in the slot. Now I can't use the CL. So the CL is currently in Germany with the engineers to get fixed and then that will come back. Will I keep the CL? Yes, I am planning to keep the CL as a backup camera because it's a really small camera, perfect for trips like this. If it was working as a second body, a backup body, because for client work, you definitely need two cameras. What about the Leica MT40? Am I still using the Leica MT40 after buying the SL? Not that much, if I'm honest. Um, I do prefer the size of the like M240 for street photography, especially if I'm using a larger lens on the like SL, because I feel like I really can't blend in in the street environment if I've got like a say the zoom lens on, which is yay big. I'll include an insert so you can see it. But the Leica SL with the 3570 zoom lens is quite a large setup, and so it's absolutely not stealth <laughs> for street photography. On the other hand, if you use a small like an M mount lens or say a, like a thread mount lens on the SL, it does make it a more compact setup. So the M240 definitely still has its place, but for my portraiture, I'm now 100% going for the SL and not the M240. I will cover this in full details in a future video, but the main reason is for those of you that don't know, you can use a like an SL to get much closer to your subject. And because it's mirrorless, what you see is what you get. So that's in terms of focus and it's also in terms of exposure. So it just makes it so easy. A bad example because I've got the fixed Leica adapter on at the moment, but the adapter that's on the video camera is the close focus seven artisans adapter. See that video for more information. It lets you close focus any lens. So lenses like the vintage Leica Almar 90 centimeter F4 has a minimum close focus distance of one meter. But when you attach it to a close focus adapter, I can now get probably 30 centimeters, like close, close, like more than close enough for headshots. So that overcomes the biggest kind of drawback I had with the Leica M system. And that's why I really like the like a SL system. In terms of lenses, again, I'll include some inserts so you can get a, a proper visual. But I've been using on this trip the little Voigtlander Nocturne Classic 40mm 1.4. And as you can see from the photo, that gives a really nice compact setup. I was using this setup for low light and for kind of anything where I wanted the, the 40 to 50mm focal length distance. For outside portraits, I found that I've been much preferring the 90mm lens, which is unusual because in the past I've always shot 50 is my kind of go-to focal length. So maybe new times are coming because now I seem to be gravitating towards longer lenses, which I've never done before because I was always on an M system and M systems work really well with 50mm lenses. And to add to that, less well with longer lenses, such as a 90 and 135 in terms of like a M mount lenses. 
the lenses I use the most on the Leica SL is actually R lenses. So these are Leica R lenses, they are cheaper than the Leica M equivalent. And in terms of optical quality, there's not a huge difference. If you watch my 50mm shootout video, or one of them, did the Leica Summicron M versus Leica Summicron R, 50mm versus 50mm. And there was not a huge difference in terms of the, the, the image quality. The advantage of R lenses is I can close focus without needing the close-up adapter. But because of the R adapter, it does make the camera a bit bigger and a bit heavier. If you want a really small setup with the Leica SL, I would definitely recommend small Leica thread mount lenses and small Leica M mount lenses. The adapters are smaller and it just makes it a much nicer, lighter setup to carry around all day. That being said, if you do use something like the, the lens I'm videoing with, which, which is the Leica Vario Elmar 35-70 f4 lens, suddenly you now have the ability to shoot with zoom lenses on a Leica which some of you might be unsubscribing to the channel for. You can't use zoom lenses on a Leica. If you actually read some of the lens specs, certain zoom lenses are actually higher optical quality than their prime lens counterparts. So for example, Owen puts rights in his uh, write-up of the 35 to 70. That lens is sharper at f4 than the Leica Simulux 51.4 and the Leica Simulux 35 1.4. So those are two high, high-end prime lenses, you would think, being fast glass, yet, if you shoot the lenses f4, f5.6, f8, the zoom lens actually performs better. So that's kind of myth busting. Like, pfft. I've always strongly thought that prime lenses are the go to lens, and also fast prime lenses are the go to lens because if you stop a 1.4 lens down to f2, generally it performs better than an f2 lens. So now with the zoom lens, I'm less anti zoom lenses. I'll do a full video on zoom lenses at some point. But one great way to think of it is if you have a 35 to 70, you've got a 35mm prime, you've got a 50mm prime, and you've got a 70mm prime. So it's the equivalent of having three amazing Leica lenses in one package. So then for my fashion photography, beauty photography, model photography, whatever you'd like to call it, it's really great to have the option to go from 35 to 70 really quickly without having to change lenses, depending on the, the model's pose and the location. And it just makes everything much faster. And because I'm shooting in a really bright, sunny uh, country, F4 is more than fast enough. And I think maybe it's strange to say this, and I'm, I'm sure I'll disagree with myself at a later date, but I feel like I've grown out of the fast glass phase of my photography. In the past, I needed the Noctilux, the Simulux, the 1.2, the 1.4. Now I'm more than happy at F4, and I don't think the pictures are any worse. <laughs> maybe they are, uh, but I don't feel like I'm losing anything by not having fast glass. It almost makes you shoot better. Again, I'm sure this is very controversial, but if you've got more of the background in focus, then you need to think a bit more about the background when you're composing your image. If you're shooting at 1.0 on the Noctilux, the background is this complete mush, so you don't need to consider the background at all. So for environmental portraits, obviously you wouldn't use the fast lens for environmental portraits, but for environmental portraits, an F4 lens is quite a nice setup, um, especially when you have enough light. Obviously it's a different match in the UK in the winter months when it's raining and dark. Um, and then a 1.4 lens, 1.2, is really good for low light photography. But for these bright conditions, I found the F4 to be brilliant. So let's now look at some example photos shot with the Leica SL in Tenerife. So first set of photos is shot with the Voigtlander Nocturne Classic 40mm F1.4. There's a Leica M lens and it gives a nice small setup. Being a 1.4 lens, you get a more shallow depth of field. So I was using this when there was less light than in other situations. Next, we have some photos shot with a like a thread mat lens or like a screw mat lens. This is the vintage like a Almar 9 cm or 90mm f4 lens. This is a really great portrait lens and after doing my 90mm shootout video, I now highly rate this lens and I'm more than happy to shoot f4 with a smaller lens and say the Leica Summicron 90 f2 which I also own which is a bigger heavier lens less suited for overseas shoots such as this one. I really like this lens and I like the compression and it's generally more flattering for female portraits. Next these are photos shot with the Leica Vero Elmar R35-70 f4 zoom lens. 
really useful to shoot both 35mm end and 70mm end. It was usually one end or the other and then fine tuning composition if I wasn't able to say move back anymore. Could just change the zoom from say 70 to 60 if I wanted to get a hand in the shot which is currently being chopped or use 40 instead of 35 if I was trying to clean up the background or the composition, something like this. Uh, all these photos are shot at f4, the same as the 90mm photos, they're all shot at f4. The 40mm photos were probably shot at a range between 1.4, f2, f2.8, I think, from memory. Lastly, a lens I didn't mention at the start of this video, I also use on occasion the Leica SL with Nikon lenses. So on this overseas shoot, as well as shooting digital, as, you, as some of you may know, I also shoot film. So I've been using the Leica R6 for black and white portraits and I've been using the Nikon FM2 for colour portraits. Because the Nikon FM2 also gives me a small setup, I chose to bring the Voigtlander 28mm colour scope art lens as my walkabout lens. Now when it came to indoor portraits, for some photos I found the 35 focal length was not wide enough, so I used the Nikon lens on the like SL for a Nikon to like adapter. So these photos are shot with the Voigtlander SL which is a Nikon F mount Voigtlander colour scope R lens. See my recent 28mm shootout if you want to see how this lens performs but in brief it performs really well and not that differently from the, the new 28mm Voigtlander Ultron which I also reviewed. So those are some example photos. I did shoot some behind the scenes footage with some of the models for my Patreon so if you're not already on Patreon and if you want to try it out you may want to try it out in the next couple of months because some of the behind the scenes videos you might appreciate if you like this kind of thing. So if I can summarise my thoughts two months into my like SL journey, pros would be number one the big bright viewfinder and being able to close focus for my portraits. Number two being more robust than the like M240 I no longer now need to worry about if it gets bumped in a bag or something and then the rangefinder being knocked out of calibration and not being able to accurately focus my images. That was a big, big reason why I looked to get this camera over my M240. And number three, despite my worries before buying the camera, it's not as big and heavy as I first worried. Um, I find the, the menus and everything really easy to follow and it sounds stupid, but it, it, it just works. It's actually making me move away from rangefinder cameras at the moment and towards SLR cameras. <coughs> so I've been using my like R6 more than my like uh, say M6 for example, and I've been using the SL more than the M240. So strange times. Also, I forgot to mention for any of you that wear glasses, the diopter on the SL is really really useful. I'm slightly short-sighted, so I can't really see what I look like <laughs> on the camera that you guys are viewing from. So again, for portraits and critically focusing. The viewfinder is really good. You can't really miss focus with a like SL because you can see you zoom in, focus on the eyelashes of the nearest eye if you shoot portraits like me and you can't really miss. Gone are the days of using a like an M camera and realizing every photo is slightly missed because your rangefinder is knocked out of calibration. So I can 100% appreciate why a lot of people switch from an M system to the SL system when the SL system was first released. Those were the people that were coming to me for workshops at the time before the SL came out where they were struggling to focus an M camera. Uh, this is such an easy camera to use, anybody can use it, uh, even me. <laughs> so as mentioned, I will do proper detailed comparison videos, SL versus CL, SL versus M240, SL versus S5. But for that, I need to do some boring kind of test shots so we can pixel peep and all that kind of thing. But in the meantime, I wanted to share this kind of real photography using the Leica SL here in Tenerife. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and then hopefully this video will get shared to other people interested in Leica cameras and perhaps the SL and as always a massive thank you to my patrons. This is my first flight outside of the UK since Covid so I can now get back on track with doing overseas workshops and model shoots so all of you that have been writing to me over the last 12 to 18 months I know I need to do model shoots in Germany, I think Istanbul, Poland, maybe the US if there's enough interest and potentially I might offer a kind of limited space workshop with me in Tenerife, uh, perhaps in 2022. So yeah, exciting times to come. Thank you so much for watching and excuse my goggle marks. I went for a swim this morning and it's imprinted kind of rings on my face. Okay, bye.